All right, in this video, we'll continue on talking about unit two, looking at this skin and bone unit, and this time looking at specifically at bone classification and function. So a couple of classifications of the skeletal system or just bones in general. Um, one of, this is one you're going to be fam very familiar with. And so the first classification is called the axial skeleton. I don't have that written anywhere up here, but you can spell axial. And the axial skeleton involves the skull. Oh, there it is right there. The skull and the ribs and the vertebra. So you can think of this as like the center axis of the body. This is where all the vital organs are. It's where the, the whole, basically the whole nervous system is housed in the, there, the brain and the uh, spinal cord. And then um, I'll be the um, vital organs inside the ribs. And then there's the appendicular skeleton, which is the appendages and the limb girdles. And so appendages are arms and legs. Limb girdles are things like your shoulder stuff and your hip bones. The next classification of bones is the shape of bones. And there are four different bones that we're going to look at, four different types of bones. The first one is a long bone. You see that there on A. Long bones are considerably longer than they are wide, which, you know, that makes sense. Their ends are often expanded, and they're larger than the shaft. So you can see here these, these ends. The epiphysis is longer than the diaphysis. And you can see that on every one of these types of long bones. These are usually found in the limbs, as you can see. And um, the ankles, obviously, and the wrists and the kneecap aren't included in this group. There's also the lower bone or these digits on your finger are considered long bones as well. Long bones contain hollow sections that are filled with yellow marrow. So this is for fat storage. And the heads of the big long bones, so like the humerus up here in the arm, this upper arm bone, the heads of that one, and the femur, which is this leg bone, also contain red marrow. Then there is the short bones, which are here. And the short bones are cube-shaped is the best way to think about them. So uh, they're not obviously a cube, but they're kind of this, just a little ball. Uh, wrist bones, ankle bones, great example of this, some of the digits in your fingers and toes. Also, there's a certain kind of short bone. I think I have a slide for it. Yep. Sesamoid bones. And these are also under short bones. These are bones that form in a tendon. And so here you have the knee. There's this tendons that connect the knee together. And then there's the kneecap. It is the patella is an example of a sesamoid bone. They get that name because they are sesame seed shaped. Not kidding. And you have some sesamoid bones on your toe, big toe as well. And they just kind of sit there. They're for holding those tendons together. And they can really hurt when they're injured. Next is the flat bones. They're called flat bones because they're flat. They're also... Um, thin usually so it's not like a thick flat bone but a thin bone they're usually curved and so this is the sternum which is what you see here the sternum is like your breastbone um, the shoulder blades are also examples of this ribs uh, you don't think of ribs being flat bones but they are and then your skull bones as well are flat and curved bones most of these are well these flat bones contain most of the red marrow in your body and so most of the red blood cell production in the body happens in these flat bones. And then there are irregular bones. They're called irregular because they have no regular shape to them. If you look at this vertebra here, its shape is definitely there for its function. It is a very specifically shaped bone, like the hip bone is another example of an irregular bone. There's no the only reason it's shaped that way is to perform its very specific function. It doesn't match anything else in the skeletal system. And so next, let's move on to the functions of bones. We're going to list seven different functions of bones. Two of them are on this particular slide. The first one is support. And what do we mean by support? Support is like providing a framework for the body. If you 
build a house or you build some sort of building, you'll watch and they build the framework first. They frame the house first and then they put on all the walls and doors and that sort of thing. And so this framework provides a structure for the rest of the body's parts. This allows us to stand upright. You know, our legs support us for standing. Our ribs support all of our organs being in that particular place and allow us to stand also. And so this is what we mean by support. Protection is easy. It is the actual protection of the vital structures of the body. The brain is a great example. It's got a picture of a skull here. The ribs, as I mentioned earlier, both of these are examples of the protective function of bones. The next one is called anchorage. All right. Anchorage is has to do with muscle or bones serving as anchor points for muscles. The primary function of muscle tissue, remember, is to move things. And so that the, the way that muscles are able to move bones is by anchoring to them using uh, connective tissues called tendons. And basically they use the bones then as levers to move the body. And certain le- I mean, with levers, if you're familiar with physics, you can move a lot of things. And so we're able to stand upright. We're able to move across the room with that, those kinds of levers just by using muscles. And so very important function. Uh, Joint design also has a lot to do with this movement. We'll talk some more about that when we get to the skeletal system itself. But this is a very important part of how we do life. Even breathing has to do with this concept of anchorage, our ability to breathe, Our, our ribs and everything have to move in concert with our lungs in order for us to be able to breathe. Next is mineral storage. Minerals like calcium and phosphate are stored in the bones. Minerals can be released into the bloodstream when they're needed, or they can be added to the bones as needed. And so if we have excess calcium or excess phosphate, the bones serve as a storage facility for those minerals. Blood cell formation. There's a special word for that. Hematopoiesis is blood cell formation. The red marrow in certain bones undergo this process. And as you can see, this process can be complicated. We're not going to get into the ins and outs of this now other than just to give you that big word and say this is one of the functions of bones. And next is triglyceride storage. Triglyceride is just a fancy word for fatty acids and um, or fats in general. And so as the body gets those, it stores them in the bones that can be used for lots of different things. And so the bones serve as a storage facility for that fat. And then lastly is hormone production. One example of hormones that the, or hormone that the bones produce is called osteocalcin. Osteocalcin has a couple of functions, but we're going to mainly talk about its function to regulate insulin secretion and glucose homeostasis. And so the production of this bone, which makes sense if you think about it, bones are found all over our body. And so it's, it's a quick way to get that hormone out to the tissues And so it controls that insulin production and then glucose homeostasis, which is a fancy way to say uh, the amount of sugar that's in our blood or not. Those two things work together with the pancreas and with other organs to, to make sure that our sugar levels are at normal. 